I'm pretty sure you guys have heard of the term quiet quitting. You know, we've talked about that before on the channel, but have you ever heard of the term quiet unretirement? Yeah, I know it's weird. It's a new one for me too, but it's exactly as it sounds as the economic situation is starting to drive people who have already retired back into the workplace since they can't afford to rest their days in comfort. That's right. Just because you're retired doesn't mean you get to stay retired in this economy. So if you're sitting back, kicking back on Social Security, SSI, SSDI, well, you may have to come back. Now, don't get mad at me. I, I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but it is what it is. And you guys come here for the truth, and this is what I give you. Now, we're also getting data that shows how some banks are relying on the Fed to keep themselves alive while they are effectively insolvent. Should we take our money out of the banks now? Well, if they did what Wells Fargo did to their customers, I might have to strongly consider that. The bank is also set to pay billions of dollars over consumer abuses. Now, I'm not kidding you guys when I say, hey, we should strongly consider the safety of our money in these banks. Now, before I continue, please take a second, drop a like for the video. I really appreciate the support. And if you're in need of your daily dose of the truth when it comes to the US economy, the stock market, social security, money making opportunities, creating and starting a small business or even a side hustle for the first time and everything in between, make sure to subscribe to the channel. And if you own a home, make sure your home is protected. Get your free home warranty quote. The link is in the description down below this video. The state of our economy can pretty much be summed up in one word bad. Now, I, I know it's not very creative, but you know, there are worse words I can use, but I don't want YouTube flagging or demonetizing the video. So we'll just leave it at bad. But yeah, our economy isn't doing so great right now, even though we're being fed a whole lot of positivity. Don't worry. The Fed's got this under control. Jerome Powell, man, he's raising these interest rates. He's going to get these, this economy under control. Yeah. Oh, don't forget. We're not in a recession. Food's not that expensive. Social security increase for 2023. It's more than enough and so on and so on. Yeah. You, you guys heard all this. Well, if things are that great, then why is the average social security benefit falling short of inflation? Now, the COLA for social security in 2022 was what? 5.9%, right? But research has found that on a monthly basis, it hasn't kept up by at least 46%. How do they expect these people to pull through? Do you know anybody who's on social security, SSI, SSDI that's living it up? They're balling. Now think about those on fixed income. How are they paying for their food and health care as all of these expenses are going up, but their income isn't? Do they have anything set aside for emergency, investment accounts, 401ks, brokerage accounts, any form of passive income coming in outside of Social Security, SSI, SSDI? That is why it is so surprising to see more workers coming out of retirement. During the health crisis, more than 2 million people retired. But now, most of those people are quietly returning back to work. Now, are you ready to know just how many of them are coming back? Eh, let's just say it's about 27%. Now, think about that for a second. Now, on the one hand, I'm kind of amazed that people of this age are still willing and able to come back to work. That's an attitude of hardworking Americans. I appreciate and I'm impressed by the hustle. But at the same time, these are the same people who deserve to live out the rest of their years. I mean, you know, they should be able to put their feet up at this point. But since inflation has affected so much of them, they've had to pick the choice between going back to work or risk running short on funds every single month. Now, speaking of more signs that the economy is nowhere near as strong as what we're being told, FedEx now has more plans to cut costs as demand is dwindling. Now, they're cutting a billion dollars more in costs as they say that weak demand has eaten into their quarterly profit. Have you guys seen FedEx's stock market stock price? Now, we already know what this means. It means more layoffs. At least they start with that. Now, according to their CFO, Mike Lenz, quote, our teams have an unwavering focus on rapid implementing cost savings to improve profitability. As we look to the second half of our fiscal year, we are accelerating our progress on cost actions, helping to offset continued global volume softness, end quote. Well, you heard it straight from FedEx right there. FedEx company share is down by about 36% year to date, a trend that has been very common in the stock market these days. Now I'm saying though, at the same time, stock prices heading down could present very good buying opportunities. I'll be honest with you guys, guys, I myself, me and my family, we are dollar cost averaging into great companies on the stock market. S&P 500 ETFs, mutual funds, index funds, even some of these big tech companies that are falling in price right now. Yes, we are investing heavily in the stock market, but only when I see good deals. But here's something that really isn't that common. A huge bank paying back money for abusing their customers. <laughs> Wells Fargo has just agreed to pay $3.7 billion in a settlement with the Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, also known as the 
CFPB after they took advantage of customers. These were mostly tied to automobile loans, car loans, mortgages, and overdraft fees. How many of you guys are getting hit with overdraft fees and you don't feel like they're valid? You might want to see if you can get them waived. Now, according to an agency release, it says, quote, the bank's illegal conduct led to billions of dollars in financial harm to its customers and for thousands of customers, the loss of their vehicles and homes. Consumers were illegally assessed fees and interest charges on auto mortgage loans, had their cars wrongly repossessed and had payments to auto and mortgage loans misapplied by the bank, end quote. Wow. Can you imagine this? You make your car payment and you think everything's good and then they come and repossess your car anyway. Can you believe this? Cars and houses were taken away because their mortgage payments that they gave to the bank were misapplied. Can you imagine you lose your house, you and your family, you're put out on the street, you've been making your mortgage payment on time, they misapply your mortgage payment, they think you didn't pay your mortgage, and then all of a sudden your house is in foreclosure and the sheriff comes knocking at your door telling you to get out. This is crazy. Well, I guess this is where the $3.7 billion settlement's coming from. But while yes, there is justice, but these lives have already been shattered, disrupted, and for others, their lives could have been completely destroyed. And just how much money did Wells Fargo make if they're willing to pay back billions of dollars? You gotta wonder that. I mean, it makes you wonder if we can actually trust the banks at this point. But of course, we need to have some money there. Let's be honest, right? We need to be able to make bill payments, to be able to receive a paycheck through, but it's hard to think of what happens to someone who keeps all their money in one bank and then something like this happens. Trust is a limited commodity. It's best we know where to place it. Should we trust the Fed with it? Around 30 banks that are effectively insolvent are doing just that as the Fed's emergency funding is keeping them around. Now it also says that quote, with quantitative tightening occurring in the background, liquidity is being drained from the system. Deposits are declining, albeit predominantly at large banks so far. Funding pressures are gradually rising and borrowing costs are increasing, end quote. I got a feeling this might be related to that FTX fallout, although we're not going to see its full effects right now. I think that the effects of billions of dollars being eviscerated in the grand scheme of things will start to affect the banks and even the stock market soon enough. But how would you feel if you went into the bank to ask for your money and they told you that they didn't have enough cash to give you? What if a bank run suddenly happens? Then what, right? And these banks are outright performing crimes against us in broad daylight and all they have to do is pay a few billion dollars and everything's okay. But what about the lives that were changed forever? What about the credit scores that were destroyed? Equifax, Experian, TransUnion credit scores destroyed as banks banks have misapplied payments and now it looks like you were late on your car payment or didn't pay it at all. You got repossessions, maybe a foreclosure. I mean, I'm not exaggerating since losing a car or uh, or housing can flip your world upside down quick and in a hurry. I mean, it just reminds us that diversification of our assets is important with our money. Don't keep all your assets. Don't keep all your cash. Don't keep all your money. Don't keep all your eggs in one basket. It's also why we should have an emergency fund that's ready to go at any given point in time. It might even be wise to distribute parts of that emergency fund into different banks so that you have diversification. Now, a few things that we should all consider doing, again, save something for a rainy day. That's what our mom told us, right? Clean up our debt. Eliminate the high interest credit card debt. Eliminate the high interest debt, period. Don't buy things we don't need. Get rid of expenses, useless subscriptions that we don't use. Look within ourselves to make our own opportunities. Now, the last one was very important, and it's something that I know a lot of you guys in this community fully understand. Now, at this point, there is no Superman. There is no Thor. There's no knight in shining armor. There is no hero that will help us, not even the government, not to any measurable extent. It's up to us to become our own heroes. Y'all know what I'm saying? Now, if you're interested in learning more about budgeting, about smart investments, be it in the stock market or real estate market, we could talk about venturing in the side hustles that could possibly generate multiple streams of income, starting small businesses, home-based businesses, creating LLCs, and taking full advantage of any applicable tax advantages and tax write-offs. Then feel free to get in contact with me as I'm willing to share my knowledge so long as it helps you solve your financial troubles. Now, I hope to hear from you guys soon. Now, before I go, please don't forget to drop a like for the video. Also consider subscribing to the channel. Really appreciate that, fam. That way you'll always get your daily dose of the truth. I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are awesome, and I will see you on the next one.